Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our montage hands-on review of an assortment of tech products and gadgets under $10. They're all fairly unique and different in their own ways, so we're going to take a look at them one by one. So let's start with the first, uh, which is called the Igloo Phone. This is a very strange little accessory. It's made out of silicone, and there's actually a stand that you can pop this into, and it basically transports into a flat roll that you can put easily into a backpack. Basically what it does is when you open it up, it uh, is in the shape of an igloo, as the name suggests, and you put this onto your knee, or onto the cap of your knee, and then your phone will sit onto the suction cup as well as onto the stand. So basically when you're sitting in bed, you're able to still watch videos and interact with media without having to hold your phone for extended periods of time. And now you can enjoy the media without having to hold it, uh, especially for longer clips or if you're, uh, again, browsing the web. This is actually very comfortable, especially if you're on a sofa or if you're reclining in a bed. Um, again, this is nice. It's actually a very clever uh, and thoughtful overall design. And even if you just see position of your knees ever so slightly, lying it flat, making it taller, the uh, igloo phone still stays in place actually very well. And it's uh, not falling out anytime soon, even if I remove this now from my knee uh, and kind of uh, pull on this. So that's the first product, the igloo phone. And you can find it in a number of different colors and it sells for under $10, around $7 or so. The next item on this list is also highly unusual. It's not really a modern tech or gadget, but it still is very interesting and it's making a bit of a resurgence in the past few months, getting more popular on sites like Amazon as well as Gearbest. It sells for about $8 and it's known as the Storm Glass. Basically, it's a fully enclosed capsule that contains a solution, including some crystals that starts to grow as well as shrink depending on different types of weather environments. At least that's the claim. Basically, this is just pseudoscience. It's similar in concept to something like a storm rock. Um, it tells you things printed on the side, but it really the only factor that makes the crystals change as far as the properties are concerned are, is based on temperature. And that's been confirmed through many different experiments that people have conducted uh, after the product was released. So if it gets warmer, for instance, the crystal starts to shrink and get transparent, uh, like the color here. And if it gets colder outside, um, the crystals start growing as well as changing properties. Sometimes it starts to even snow, kind of like a snow globe by itself, which is very cool. And here's a key. Basically, if it's a clear liquid, it means it's fair weather. If it's a murky liquid, it means it's rainy weather. Crystals at the very top of the uh, solution here means that it has a thunderstorm nearby. Large flaky crystals means there's cloudy skies uh, above. And if there are threads of crystals in the entire solution, that means that it's windy weather. The actually interesting thing, though, is that it sometimes does actually get its predictions right. Now, when you first get this out of the box, the recommendation is actually for you to shake it up. So you would want to shake it pretty vigorously until you see all the crystals uh, start to uh you know, dissipate into this liquid, or you can also heat it up using a hair dryer um, just to apply some heat to make all of the crystals completely melt away. Afterwards, you're supposed to put this into one location or spot, such as on a window, uh, to let everything uh, start to settle down for at least two to three days before you start to see the crystals grow as well as to change properties. As a quick evidence of that, I have a uh, image that I took actually this morning, and you can see that the crystals were actually much taller. They formed almost towards the top of the uh, letters that are print on the side that gives you the key or legend. And just for fun, here's a time-lapse footage just captured by someone else and put onto YouTube. It's a sped up, of course, but you can see that the crystals do actually morph as well as change depending on different environment settings. So if you have the AC on, if you, you know, put it near, let's say, a fridge, uh, you do see this crystallization. And here's yet another video where you see as it gets heated up, we see almost a snow globe-like effect where the entire uh, inside seems to be snowing and uh, to glance occasionally on your desk and to see this effect happening definitely is pretty mesmerizing and a good conversation starter. Next, a very simple but useful gadget uh, accessory. It's called a bottle cap tripod, and like the name suggests, it fits over the cap of any standard bottle or drink, and you can then put on a camera. You can also put a smartphone if you have an adapter to take images uh, you know, more steadily or to capture landscape or panoramic shots. So actually a pretty little accessory for under $5. So here's a bottle of water, and you do want to have it at least partially filled because if it's completely empty or too light, it's not going to sustain the weight of the camera, and it's probably going to topple over. 
So here we have the Samsung Galaxy camera as an example. It fits in pretty well, and you can also use, let's say, a Bluetooth remote control to create uh, selfies or images with more people in the same shot, since the camera is now steadily on a tripod with a higher elevation, and you can also change the tilt. I would say that this is probably not the best accessory to get, though, if you plan on using it with a DSLR or a really large and bulky camera, just because even though the weight of the water might be enough, it can still tilt over if the camera is too heavy or large, because again, the cap here is uh, slightly loose, depending on what drink that you choose because it fits over it. But for smaller point and shoots and average sized cameras in addition to smartphones with a mount attached, it actually works really well. You can see that it uh, supports the weight without any problems. I can tilt it and it works quite well for aligning larger shots or landscape shots uh, without you having to hold the camera yourself. This next product is a good example of how storage, especially flash memory, has come down in cost through the years. This is a 32 gigabyte card and it's a dual USB drive with 3.0 speeds up to 5 gigabits per second, so very quick. You can use it as a conventional USB for computers, including Mac and PC, but that's not very exciting. The interesting part is that it also has a micro USB port or an OTG port. You can also get an adapter or a version with USB type C. So you can plug it onto your smartphone for transferring content over if the storage gets full without having to plug the phone into a computer to transfer those files out. So it has a dual port connector, which is very cool. SanDisk also has a free app that you can install in the Play Store or in the iOS Store that uh, allows you to more easily manage the content and files directly as a backup uh, instant solution. You can tap on it once and it backs up all the files for you. Uh, with that being said, this is something that only works with OTG supported phones. And here it is, it actually has a relatively unique and clean design for a low cost thumb drive. You have the SanDisk logo, these small 3D cubes interlacing the entire design. It is made out of plastic instead of uh, having too much aluminum, but overall it's quite small, compact and lightweight. And it also has this very interesting kind of metal leg running across the arm, uh, segmenting the two types of plastics that they're using. Um, this is also a slider that you can slide over here to uh, pop open the full size USB 3.0 port. And I can slide over to the right to access the micro USB port for plugging it into a smartphone. And we have the 32 gigabyte printed onto the metal arm of the USB 3.0 port. And again, this is the OTG micro USB on the other side. So once plugged into a compatible smartphone, you'll see a message that has a USB logo on the top and it says SanDisk USB drive for transferring photos and media. I can explore just by tapping on it. And we also have kind of a readme and PDF instruction manual that is preloaded onto the thumb drive. Um, it tells you a little, little bit more about how to use this particular memory stick as well as uh, how to load it and how to use the companion app if you want to download it. The next uh, item is a digital watch from a company called Montic, and they actually specialize in many different forms of watches. It's not necessarily going to be smart watches. It doesn't have features like Bluetooth or reminders, but it is very low cost. This one in particular sells for only $7. So if you're getting something uh, just for traveling, you don't want to bring along something more expensive, it at least is functional and adds a touch of style. Um, it also comes in a number of different colors, which is at least pretty cool. And it also has an inverted display on this particular model. Uh, so you can see the black as well as the white is the text. The box opens like this and it says for instructions, you can send an email to manuals at monticwatch.com and here's what it looks like. Let's peel off this protective tape. And again, this mirrored surface is actually very interesting along with this inverted display. It's actually a pretty attractive looking watch for only $7. It has this nice green text that uh, is kind of retro in its overall styling. If we turn off the lights here and tap on the backlight, you can see it also turns green, but only the text instead of the entire display. So again, a pretty interesting um, display that they're using with the inversion the mirrored surface, but it's not quite as easy to read, especially under slightly darker environments as a uh, more traditional display or an e-paper or e-ink display, as you can see here. Size though, about the same. It's a little bit thicker than a typical uh, watch, especially for a non-smart watch, but uh, because it is made out of a soft touch rubber material, it does feel pretty comfortable. The back here is made out of aluminum, Montic, and again, there are many other colors as well as designs and schemes to pick from if you don't like this particular one, but this serves as an example. And finally, we're going to take a look at two unique stylists. The first type that we have in front of you uh, actually comes in a pack of three. It uh, sells for about $3, so it's about $1 each if you buy them individually. And it's basically a dust plug style stylus that's very small in terms of the arm, but 
kind of cute. It goes into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack of your smartphone if your phone still has one of these ports and it prevents dust uh, as well as uh, moisture from getting in and you can unplug it when you want to use it with a simple rubber plug uh, for maybe quickly sketching or writing out characters if you are using a different language for input and it pops out just like this so a very small design also has kind of bling embedded onto the sides and here's what it looks like after I plugged it into the headphone port of this Elephone device. It protrudes ever so slightly, uh, but it doesn't really obstruct from using the phone or putting it into a pocket, anything like that. And just to test that it is functional, we're going to hold it like this. The grip, again, is very small, but it conducts your touch because it's metal. And I'm able to then navigate the interface of this phone pretty easily, swipe down, and it actually is pretty sensitive as far as the t sensitivity is concerned. This may seem like an ordinary match, which can light something on fire, but it's actually a capacitive touchscreen stylus that will work for the Apple iPad, the Microsoft Surface, the iPhone, and most Android devices. It's fairly precise, and we'll talk about the accuracy and how it works uh, in a little bit. But first, a bit more about the product. It sells for roughly 10 bucks on Amazon and also in stores. This is what the packaging looks like. It comes in a few different colors as well. This is the most traditional one that looks authentic to an actual uh, uh, match with the wood part actually being made out of a soft touch rubber material and the tip. But it also comes in colors like red, uh, green, and blue. So a bit more info on the back of the packaging. It, it reads, when inspiration strikes, take note, our mega match may look like a low tech, but it's actually a precision tool for drawing drawing or stylishly tapping out text on a touchscreen device. And so this will prevent any fingerprints from getting accumulated on a screen. It's also useful if you have a glove on in the winter time and you try to interact with your device without having to take off the gloves. So there's quite a few uses for this from drawing to doodling to of course just using this as a regular stylus for notes. Taking a closer look at the design, again it's made of a soft touch rubber material so there's actually a slight bounce if you drop it on a floor or a surface so it's definitely not as stiff or hard feeling as a traditional stylus. Overall though, even though the stem is a little bit short, it still makes for a very comfortable grip just because again it's a soft touch rubber material so there's not too many issues as far as holding it just like a regular pen. Now as you kind of guess, this is actually a soft stylus in the sense that you can see the tip will depress whenever you tap it against the surface of a tablet or a phone. There is a small nub in the very center that uh, protrudes a little bit so that if you press down all the way it remains in contact in one point with the screen and gives you a fairly precise line. With that being said it's not as precise as uh, let's say the Adonit Jot Pro or other active styluses that have a very fine point. So if you are for you know drawing soup in drawing and writing uh, this might not be the most precise stylus in the world but compared to other soft styluses performance is similar. The most surprising thing for me was that it actually does work and it works quite well, um, despite the relatively comical nature and design that's going on here. It's, it seems like a gimmick, but you can see here it's actually pretty sensitive. And you can see that if I draw something very quickly, it does create a line and it follows through on the screen and it actually does a pretty respectable job. You can see I'm not pressing very hard, but all the lines uh, are present and there isn't really any lag depending on you know, how you are drawing with it. Um, obviously this isn't an active stylus in the sense it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. So compared to something like a Wacom tablet, it's not going to give you as precision if you are an artist. However, if you have some reasonable tools available, uh, you can still do some pretty nice sketches here and there for some very quick drawings and of course for notes. Um, it does a decent job despite having again this very soft tip. You can see how it depresses on the display as I kind of glide along and it also works fairly well on tablet surfaces and larger devices in general. So no real complaints as far as the accuracy of the stylus is concerned. So that's been our video, a montage look at an assortment of slightly unconventional tech products for under $10. It doesn't break the bank, but it's also useful or at least interesting conversation starters in their own ways. You can check out more details of all these products down in the links down below, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS.